An alien item is something that appears a lot on uh, the responses of students on the exams and in their SACs as well. So what is it? Well, it's been defined in the assessor's report as something that simply does not belong in a report or record. So for example, you can see there's an income statement there and we've got the other expenses section and we've got rent, wages, prepaid insurance and advertising. So one of those items simply doesn't belong. So the one that doesn't will be prepaid insurance. That's an asset, that's not actually an expense. So we'd need to put that in the balance sheet and not the income statement. So what that's called is an alien item. It does not belong in that report. And if I put it in, um, I'd lose a mark. And that's despite I might have everything else right in that income statement, but I won't get four marks because I have an incorrect item. Uh, now you only lose usually for alien items one mark for the whole report. So let's say I had uh, two uh, alien items in that report. I'd only lose one mark for all of them, not one mark for each. Um, some common examples would be if you put cost of sales in a cash flow statement. So cost of sales aren't an outflow of cash. You put sales in the balance sheet. They're a revenue which goes in the income statement. You put cash sales in the debtor's control ledger. Uh, obviously only credit sales goes in there. You put loan repayments in the income statement. Uh, loan repayments won't be an expense, so they should never go in there. You put credit sales in a cash receipts journal. That's incorrect. You should only put the receipts from debtors after the credit sale. Uh, and also, it's important to remember, they can also have an alien item in theory questions. And you've seen, uh, if you look at past exams and the assessor's comments, a lot of notes about avoiding rote learning. And what do we mean? Well, let's take a question. A business has a stock loss of $1,000 identify which element of accounting this would be classified as. So I'm going to call that an expense and let's look at the definition. The definition of an expense is it's either an outflow of economic benefits or a reduction in inflows. The second criteria is or characteristic is it's either got to decrease assets or increase liabilities. And the third characteristic of an expense is it's got to ultimately decrease owner's equity. So now what I'm going to do is in my answer I'm going to relate that definition to a stock loss. So we can see here the first characteristic is either an outflow of economic benefits or a reduction in inflows. So I only put the bit that's appropriate. So I'm only going to put there is an outflow of economic benefits and that is this stock that's been lost. So if I wrote reduction in inflows, that's a rote learned answer. That has nothing to do with a stock loss. So I'd actually lose marks for that. Looking at the second characteristic, it's either got to decrease assets or increase liabilities. So I'm going to say it decreases assets, in particular, the stock control asset. So if I mention that it increased liabilities, that's actually part of the correct definition, but I'd lose marks because it has nothing to do with this actual stock loss. Uh, stock losses don't make liabilities go up, so that would be an alien entry. Lastly, they both make uh, owner's equity would go down. That's an obvious one. But the point is, there's going to be other items. Um, so take revenues, for example, which can be inflows or savings and outflows of economic benefits. So make sure you only give the parts of the definition that are appropriate for the question. Otherwise, if you write learn, that'll be an alien entry and you'll lose marks.